Ubuntu. One word that is attracting both jurists and philosophers in equal measure. But what is the meaning of Ubuntu? Ubuntu originates from the Bantu languages and one missionary from Belgium by the name Placid Franz Tempels in 1945 published his book entitled as Bantu Philosophy or La Philosophie Bantu. Tempels explored his findings by performing ethnographic research in the modern Democratic Republic of Congo and it was in Congo living among the Bantu that he did his findings of the languages of the Bantu people and in this he found that Ubuntu is a very philosophical terminology rich in thoughts and important ideas through which the Africans interpreted their natural reality and in that case the understanding of the being and understanding of the relationships among the beings through some vital forces and in a vicious circle the living beings in terms of the human beings as opposed to non-human beings Ubuntu refers to human beings, humanness, whereas Ukintu refers to non-human beings. This philosophical perspective is equally understood and embraced by jurists in South Africa among the Ngoni Bantu and the Zulu. Ubuntu simply refers to humanity how Africans understood humanity before the introduction of human rights and how humanity is understood as relationships among individuals and their communities. The personality of individual depends on what others say it is. It is other people to define who you are in your society. Ubuntu finds its resonance in the restorative justice as understood and as opposed to the retributive justice already stipulated in our criminal justice and criminal statutes as criminal procedures. The understanding of such terminologies as premeditated crimes, such difficult terminologies as mens rea, as well as actor rebels. In that case, it is not the distinction of the person from his action, but the relationship between an individual and his community. That communalism as opposed to individualism is seen once again in the African continent, in the OAU, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, the Banjul Charter of 1981. This again is re replicated in the Makwanyani case or the Constitutional Court in South Africa, case number CCT stroke 3 stroke 94, that revisited the understanding of death penalty and the Bill of Rights. 
the meaning of the right to life, what is human dignity, is death penalty cruel, inhuman, and degrading punishment. All these views of the judicial thinkers and legal minds in South Africa brought to our understanding the importance of Ubuntu as values and principles that would be very essential and critical in the constitutional interpretation and interpretation of our laws. All the same we find Ubuntu once again in political practice, Pan-Africanism, African nationalism. The use of Ubuntu to put the African context into what Julius Nyerere referred to as Ujama socialism. The communal coexistence of Africans and Dr. Kenneth Kaunda in his humanism sees that relatedness of Africans to be something more of compassion and duty of care towards one another. In Ubuntu we see that duty of care principle, we see equity principle, we see principle of trust as existing in most of our legal systems. Professor Thomas W. Bennett dismissing the understanding of Ubuntu as an abstract idea or from philosophical uh, argumentation looks at Ubuntu as very pragmatic, practical and based on our experience and human relations. It is in this contention that we argue that Ubuntu jurisprudence is adding so much value in the principles and understanding of the judicial system and most importantly in the criminal justice. I still argue in the same platform that Ubuntu as it is understood in all its commonalities in the traditional African societies and practices is an experience shared commonly by many Africans. And that is what explains the African unity, African solidarity, and also the African integration that is promoted by the African Union. It is in this way of looking at Ubuntu that convinces me and persuaded many minds to reconsider the African jurisprudence and relooking at our criminal justice system, how restorative justice has worked in the post-genocide Rwanda, the upholding of traditional courts, Gasasa courts, in truth-telling, reconciliation, forgiveness that has brought tranquility and peace. This would again enable Africans to deal and respond to some of some of challenges facing the continent, like the pandemic, political and economic corruption, issues with to do with impunity, such challenges and problems as assassinations, genocide, problems of civil wars, problems of dishonesty, and some other misfeasances and malpractices in the administrative systems. I rest my case, Peter here, University of Nairobi, School of Law, Kisum Campus. If you like it, share it. Thank you for watching. Bye bye for now.